If you're a real estate wholesaler, investor, you've been trying to get your first deal and you just can't seem to get it done. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the three stages of your wholesaling journey. What each stage is and where, what you should be doing at each stage to doing your first deal, to doing two to three deals a month, to then scaling your real estate business. And the three stages are, the stage number one is getting your first deal done. It sounds rudimentary, but it's with some critical items in this particular stage that uh, most people miss. Stage number two is then how to go to doing deals consistently. If you do a deal, but you don't feel that you are, if you don't feel confident about you doing deals consistently each month in and out, then you're never gonna be able to leave your job, right? Because you don't have the confidence in being able to do that. And then now step number three would be the scaling. How do you go from doing two to three deals a month to doing you know, five, 10, 15, 20 deals a month? Now, the issue that I see is, I'll give you an example. I recently had a conversation with somebody that was interested in one of our programs. And what he said was that he wanted to do 20 deals a month. And so I asked him, how many deals you're doing now? He said, I'm not doing any deals. I said, okay, so you have not done your first deal at all. Yes, he says. And so then I said, well, how do you, uh, and then now you're wanting to do 20 deals? He says, yes, I know. I'm just getting everything ready because when I start uh, getting, you know, start doing marketing and start talking to sellers, I'm going to do 20 deals. That's my goal, 20 deals in the first month. And I'm like, you're not being at all realistic. It almost became so unrealistic to the, the fact that then I stopped interacting with the gentleman because I just thought that he wouldn't be a good client for us to, to work with. He is completely unaware of the different stages. So let's talk about stage number one. Stage number one is doing your first deal. Doing your first deal is so critical because number one, it proves to you that this business is real because you see everybody making money, but then are you making money? Can you do something? That proves that. So it gives you confidence to know that, hey, maybe I can do this business because until you get your first deal, it's all a fantasy. It's all you know, just a theory. In the end, it's not really uh, a reality. Now, it doesn't matter how much that first deal is because at the end of the day, a deal is a deal. And even if you, of course, you want to try to make fifteen to $20,000 in a single deal, but even if you make a couple thousand dollars, that's success. Why? Because by working that deal, now you've worked out the kinks of what has to happen for you to do uh, real estate successfully. And as a result, now you have confidence. Doing that first deal requires a lot of focus on figuring out only one lead generation strategy that you're going to focus on and you're going to become a master at that lead generation strategy. Now that lead generation strategy depends on a couple factors. Number one, it depends on time. It depends on budget. And then number three, it depends on what you like and like and not like to do, but we're going to cover those uh, step by step. So number one, it has to match your budget. If you are strapped for cash, don't have any money, then you're not going to be able to do strategies such as direct mail, such as PPC, such as Facebook, because you're going to be constrained. Uh, with the money that you have available for marketing. So you're gonna have to do more of uh, boots on the ground, you know, driving for dollars. You're gonna have to go out and find list of people that you think are, might be interested in selling the property, skip trace them, use your regular phone, regular cell phone, and call those individuals. And it's gonna be laborious, it's gonna be slow and tedious, but at the end, if you don't have the money to do that, if you don't have the money to spend on marketing, then that's the only choice you have, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, but really focusing and honing in on just one because what happens and this is you may be doing this is that I see some too many people just spread out too thin especially when you're brand new if you're trying to implement four strategies when you're brand new you are basically uh, putting together a recipe for a lot of uh, spending money and not getting anywhere you've got to pick one the internally you might feel like oh man I'm missing out because I, I you know I see these guys doing this and this guy doing this and I just feel that that I really should you know have all these things you know in place and you know because I want to be able to you know to, to build this big big huge business but you have no right saying that because you have not do, done a deal you're not even in the stadium it's like saying you want to play baseball but you've never even put on a glove right you don't even know what it feels like to put on cleats uh, and so that's the analogy there. Secondarily, now, uh, the strategy has to fit your time. You know, if you're gonna pick a strategy, like say, for example, cold calling, then um, that strategy requires more time. If you work a full-time job, you're at a, a full-time job working, say, from nine to seven o'clock at night, uh, you likely don't have the time to go out and prospect. Uh, for leads. You need some sort of incoming lead generation method that then you can then communicate with these leads while you're at work, on your lunch break, when you have time, after work. So you really only have the time to handle the leads, not generate the leads. So you need some sort of inbound method that will bring you leads while you're doing something else. The last but not least factor is whether or not you like it or not. 
You know, is it something that you like to do? Well, the fact of the matter is that whether you like it or not, it doesn't really matter because if you're at zero, then you don't have too many choices. So let's say that you don't have the time and you don't have the money and you're like, yeah, Chica, but I just don't like the idea of, you know, calling people out of the blue and cold calling them and text messaging, um, you know, about the property. I want some sort of inbound. Well, guess what? You're, you're tough luck because unless you can get somebody to give you the money or unless sometime, you know, you can get the money somehow, you're not going to be able to do marketing to generate inbound leads. And so you're stuck. So even though you hate it, even though it's laborious and even though like you grit your teeth while doing it, it's tough luck. Get over it and do it because you don't have any choice. Just shut up and do the work. You got to get your first deal. And in that stage, in stage number one, you really want to get to your third deal because the third deal really proves to you that you have a method that can get you more than one, lead, one deal because by the time you get to three deals, now you understand the business. Like you've, you've gone through, you put on the contract several properties and you put yourself in a situation where you've learned the entire process, right? Of doing a wholesale deal three times, which means that you probably have tied up, uh, put on the contract many more properties. You've had so many conversations with sellers and now like you get it, you get this business. So now you're, you're done past that which now then moves us into stage number two. And then stage number two is where you're trying to get to doing two to three deals a month because now in order for you to even consider leaving your job, if you have a full-time job, is you gotta be able to have consistency. Here's the thing, you need, you need two lead generation methods in stage number two. The lead generation method that you use on the first stage is okay, provided that can bring you consistent leads. So I'm assuming that whatever you have on stage one is one that you can bring consistent leads. So now it's a matter of, determining on that stage one, can you scale that method? Can you scale that method? And if you can't, then you're going to include a second lead generation method. So as an example, let's say that your first lead generation method was PPC and you're on a low budget, but you're able to get a couple of deals under your belt. PPC is infinitely scalable. You don't need to know, and you don't need to go out and do something else. You don't need to go out and do cold calling, text messaging, and direct mail. You're only going to dilute your efforts. You need to double down and to say, hey, I'm going to do PPC and I'm going to learn it like a ninja and I'm going to continue to fine tune what I'm doing and get better, get mentoring, get help and support, whatever you need to do to make that better. The same thing with direct mail. Direct mail is scalable. It is, again, you have to consider the cost with direct mail, but nevertheless, it's scalable. Uh, the thing that's not scalable, for example, uh, many times people struggle with, you know, Facebook sometimes is, is difficult to scale. You can scale it. I have many students that are doing, you know, three to five deals a month from it. But then past that, it becomes a little bit more difficult, right? Depending on how you're doing it. If you're doing it nationwide, that's a different story. But, you know, say, for example, that right now you're one of my students and you're doing Facebook and you've gotten yourself to do two or three deals a month, then adding PPC to that mix is ideal because now you're just adding to an already existing type of methodology that you're already used to doing. So for example, you're, you're already, you're doing online marketing. So now you're just adding another component of online marketing. And so therefore now it becomes a lot easier for you to implement that second strategy because it's working on a foundation that you already have. You need two lead generation strategies uh, that you're gonna be using in stage number two that then will help you get two, two to three deals consistently each and every single month. Now in stage number two, uh, you're not there yet at bringing new people into your business. Don't go out and you know, hire an acquisitions manager. Don't go out and say, oh man, I gotta go out and build a team. Uh, no, none of that. Your main objective is you're still being the primary person that's talking to sellers. Uh, the one thing you can bring on is a virtual assistant if you have the money for it so that that way they can help you take care of admin tasks that perhaps uh, might be clogging you up, right? Someone to be able to assist you with uh, admin and clerical, etc. So then that way you can focus on the thing that's bringing in money, which is fine tuning your lead generation strategy. While you're doing this, you're also kind of starting to lay down processes and checklists and everything else because you're looking into the future. All right. Uh, but at the same time, you don't, you, you, it's really you, you're doing the deals, which is perfectly fine. All right. Now at this stage here, you generally want to be somewhere at, at a minimum 30,000 a month, but realistically somewhere around 50 to $60,000 a month that you're bringing in, which gives you enough money for your marketing, gives you enough money for you to live on, start stacking money away. And it's out starting to create that little bit of a cushion so that you can look into the future and be able to hire someone. And then, then eventually, once you have that, let's say you're doing minimum of three to five deals consistently, better five, better five, 
deals consistently, then now you move into scaling. But the reason why you want more deals and less deals when you move into scaling is because then you're going to have to get other people to do some of the things that you are primarily doing that are revenue generating. So for example, in stage number three, you're going to be uh, getting an acquisitions person. And so you have to train them, you have to uh, work with them in order to get them up to speed. So you're doing some of the work, they're handing some of the leads, but that means that there's gonna be some breakage. That means they're not gonna be as good as you are. That means you have to be able to know that you got, you're, you're, you're up here, but you might have a slight dip as you're getting this person onboarded and, and up and running and in, embedded into your system so that, that way now you can move forward and scale. Keeping in mind is that to go to level three, which is a scaling, you also need more leads. So whatever you're doing in stage two that you figured out that, hey, these are really consistent in me uh, generating leads, then you're gonna have to scale that. Uh, you're gonna have to scale that so that way you can provide enough lead flow so that individual that's coming in to work for you uh, is able to, uh, to have a chance for success. You also need the financial cushion because it's hard to bring in somebody commission only. You could, but sometimes you can bring them in at a small amount of money, uh, $1,500 a month or so for a couple months just to uh, make sure that they can keep the lights on, that they can buy toilet paper while they're getting deals under their belt. And so, um, so that doesn't mean you're going to keep them for two months if they haven't done a deal, but you'll know pretty quickly if they're going to be legit or if they're going to you know, do well. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you got to be able to, uh, to have that buffer that you're going to cover maybe a small salary plus the marketing and uh, it's gonna be a little hairy, it's gonna be a little bit uh, um, uncomfortable for you, but at the end, that's what you need. These are the three stages. And I think that what happens with most real estate investors is that they're trying to do the right thing, right, at the wrong stage. You don't need to be thinking about scaling if you have not done your first deal. You can't be thinking about implementing three marketing strategies if you have not gotten your first deal. You gotta focus on the thing that you need at that particular stage so that now you can then set a foundation that will enable you to go to the next stage. And I want you to succeed. And that's why I created this video because of conversations that I've had and recently, the gentleman, if you're watching, you're doing it wrong, um, focus on getting you that first deal. And that is the most important thing in your real estate business. Now, if you were interested in exploring how to find motivated sellers online and how to do it with Facebook and Google, there's a video that'll pop up here or there somewhere, click on it, it'll take you to a training that I have here on YouTube that a lot of people have taken and have had great success with generating leads online for your real estate business. Check it out.